sometimes we're faced with an interesting situation. And perhaps we'll say some words to each other which could be construed as not very pleasant. <laughs> and this distance is very comfortable to exchange words. But, but, but this distance becomes a lot less comfortable to have a conversation. And sometimes they can come even closer, and this becomes really uncomfortable for a conversation. <laughs> this is especially uncomfortable to discuss family history, for example. <laughs> With every, uh, with every uh, closing of the distance, our in inner internal state changes. And the most unpleasant uh, sensation is when we are at the very close distance with physical contact. Therefore, therefore you should start training your students to work from contact and to learn to break that contact. And uh, we usually try to solve our problems at this distance. When we are more experienced, we solve things at a greater distance. And when we're very, very experienced, we solve this like that, or with a phone call. <laughs> Said, what? <laughs> that's life. That's how. It, uh, honestly, that's how it works. So we uh, start our work from contact. So the question arises: Where should we hit? The partner will position his hands on you from a variety of positions. We need to see parts of the body that are either tense or stretched out. We understand that if the shoulder is raised, there is tension on the neck from both sides. There is tension in the chest and in the abdomen too. Your job now is to position your fist into a place which is stretched out or tense and to do a push into your partner. But your push needs to take the whole body of the partner. The whole body needs to respond. Uh, the vector of the push is very important. If you push into the stomach, the partner has a chance to neutralize it, to escape it. We understand that we'll strike into the stomach too. But you need to be confident in your strikes. Convincing. So for now, for now, try to work in the zones which have least mobility, the least mobility. Position your hand and push and take the whole body with your push. Let's consider the common problems. Uh, Mo many of us will position the fist, raise the elbow, tense the shoulder, and then try to hit. Your fist needs to move on a trajectory which is not very visible. At the last moment, you can give the vector to your push with your elbow. If I try to hit him from that position, he sees it and he will respond to it. Do things that are less visible. You don't see those, right? If you are also, please remember, if you are in contact, any movement of your body, the partner will read and understand. If I do movement with my body, he responds, because he feels it. So try to show minimum motivation on your body.
Your pushes could be normal and regular or slightly unusual. Sometimes you can strike a person as if you were holding a hammer in your hand. For now, we're working with one push. It's important to select the right vector for the push. If I pick the wrong one, I almost make my partner's movement stronger. Movement against me. You, uh, I don't know if you remember the expression, you can hit a person in such a way that he'll start hitting you. That's because you give the wrong direction to your strike. If the person does a movement towards you and you accelerate the other shoulder, but if you hit in the right vector, you will uh, diffuse his movement. Partner will uh, come and hug you and touch you from a variety of positions. You always work with one movement, one push. We push into the body and into the head. When you push into the head, your movement, your push comes towards the spine, through the spine. The effectiveness of your movement will depend on the vector. Vector. You were doing this from a static position. Nice. Everyone understands? Let's pair.